Ron, walking around the fly-in, it's obvious that there's a couple of new things coming along. I chatted with you yesterday, and it seems that uh, you just won't leave well enough alone. What's going on in the world of Dynon? Well, we're continuously striving to build new and exciting things for the home-built uh, market as well as the light sport aircraft market, which is really exploding right now. Absolutely. And uh, we're doing our very best to try to make uh, glass cockpits very affordable for, for home builders and for the light sport aircraft market. Well, Dynon's become almost ubiquitous at this point with a number of the LSA crowd and some of the manufacturers. That's pretty much standard equipment now. How did that happen? Well, we worked real hard with those people uh, when they started building their aircraft and started uh, coming into the market. And um, a lot of the people nowadays want to really have glass cockpit avionics. So the demand there really kind of helped drive the light sport uh, aircraft manufacturers in that direction. Aero TV is brought to you by Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Outstanding. Can you show us what's new for this year? Sure. This year, what we're offering is this, our new HS34. Uh, it's an HSI uh, module. It's an expansion module. So you can add that onto any of our EFIS products. And, and what it does is it offers multiple inputs into our HSI uh, display here. So we, it opens up the variety of different radios that we can communicate with gives you some nice knobs for course and heading and setting your barometer. It also allows you to select between different navigation inputs and your bearing inputs. And, uh, and then it gives you synthetic voice uh, enunciation and it dims the screens automatically for you. So it's a great value for $650. Boy, you try to look at that right now on the <clears throat> brand G and otherwise, and you gotta add a couple of zeros to that, don't you? That's right. Uh, you know, those guys are all certified and they have to pay the big bucks to get that. And we we're fortunate enough, we don't have to do that. If you would, since these are built for the experimental market, talk a little bit about what you're doing to make sure that these experimental uh, avionic systems at least meet the mission requirements that even a certificated aircraft is uh, looking to do. We really look at the requirements that the big boys uh, have to meet, uh, all the SAE specs, the ASTM, and all of those. Um, and, and so we use that as a principal uh, way of you know, designing our own avionics. The thing we don't have to do is we don't have to go through all the analysis, we don't have to go through all the formal testing, which is really where the expensive part is. But we actually design to that. And then once we've designed to that, rather than doing the formal testing, what we actually do is a lot of beta testing. We have a wide group of people who are very interested in always adopting the latest and greatest. And so they do, they're our beta testers, and they do it throughout a variety of experimental airplanes. And we go through that process for many, many months before we release something. So we have a high degree of confidence that when something's actually released, it's been very thoroughly tested. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. Well, the D-10 and D-100s are in lots and lots of airplanes, so you've got quite a test fleet out there to be able to help you fine-tune your product line. Uh, that's right. And, and uh, inversely, we have a lot, of, uh, a lot of customers giving us great ideas, and so we always log those, and then when it's time for an update, we look and choose which ones are the best, which we think are are going to be adding the most value and we implement those. Well, one of the advantages to a program like that though is it allows you to do rapid updates and evolve your product far faster than certification would normally allow. That's right, certification just prevents you, it's just not cost effective to do that. And that's why we can actually do that, remain competitive and still do it very affordably. Do you have any ambitions for the certified market? Uh, the owner talks about it but quite honestly we're so busy keeping up with the experimental and the light sport aircraft market that uh, we really haven't had a lot of time to think about it. Any changes in the D10 product line? Not any on the books right now. But any hints? 
Uh, no. <laughs> just just between us and the camera. Yeah, just between us and the camera. No. <laughs> oh well. Well, we've uh, we've seen your gear in a lot of interesting LSAs and a lot of aircraft across the spectrum. Of course, we've also seen it in Spaceship One. That's correct. So um, it's obvious that Dynan has really taken a fair part of the experimental market and made it their own. At this point, where do you see this company going? Well, the owner's ambition is to someday own the entire instrument panel. So we've got the EFAS flight instruments, we've got the engine monitor, and so now there's that center center stack that we're looking at and autopilots, and so you know there's there's a long ways to go yet. Ron, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much.